Yeah. We delivered, man. Yeah, man. Our first win in the history of Las Vegas. by America First Credit Union. I'm Aaron Coscarelli alongside my four-time pro bowler and former Raider fullback Marcel Reese in the house. Marcel, before we talk about this awesome game today, we got to talk about this awesome Cox Studios here in Las Vegas. What is your take on the new digs? Cox Studio is unbelievable. <laughs> Phenomenal. It even has that new car smell to it. it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's not very silver and black-esque, and we wouldn't have it any other way. Super sleek, super chic. I could get used to this. I could also get used to the Raiders winning on the road. I need to get your take on that huge fourth down stop with less than two minutes to go, courtesy of our one defensive line. When it comes down to one play, everything else in this game is irrelevant. Yeah. Your defense comes up with a huge drive to end the game. All your young guys on defense step up. Stop the Carolina Panthers to win the game. Yeah. Guess what? We can fix all the mistakes later on, but we walk out of Carolina with a W week one, and the Las Vegas Raiders are undefeated in history. That feels really good to be 1-0, and oh, Marcel. Uh, let's take a look at our final stats of the game because we made it happen, 34 30 in Carolina, no doubt. We talked about traveling to the East Coast. That is a challenging thing for a West Coast team. Mm -hmm. And take a look, Derek Carr, efficient, 239 yards, one touchdown, zero turnovers, zero sacks. We'll talk about why the sacks part is kind of a big deal. Um, but how about Josh Jacobs, JJ, bringing it 93 yards, not one, not two, but three, three. times he finds the end zone. To your point, <laughs> Derek was – Extremely efficient. Yeah. JJ was very explosive. But the thing that jumps off the page to me is zero turnovers for mm -hmm. us. That is phenomenal. The most important thing on the field is the football. And when you protect the football, you give your chance, you give your team a yep. chance to win. Derek did that. JJ did that. All the playmakers did that. And that is what jumps off the page to me. It feels like a team effort by all accounts. Absolutely. As we take a look at what Teddy Bridgewater was able to do, a brand new offense, a brand new system, Christian McCaffrey, uh, 96 yards, two scores. What was your take on what Carolina was able to do? You know, it's, it's a... Uh, it's a little uncharted waters yeah. when it comes to Carolina and all the NFL right now. No yeah. preseason games, new head coach, new quarterback, new offensive coordinator. So guess what? Gunther, the defense, really didn't know what to expect from this, from this Carolina offense. But they stepped up and made big plays down the stretch when it counted mm -hmm. and got the win. Look, we may have gotten the win. We didn't leave, though, unscathed. Some injuries, of course, from linebacker Nick Kukowski. Even Henry Ruggs left mm -hmm. the game. Thankfully, he was able to return. But talk about our Trent Brown and then his backup, Sam Young. You lose your <laughs> starting right tackle, people. That's huge to be able to get through it without those two guys. Your starting right tackle, then your backup right yeah. tackle. You hate to see anyone go down. But you know in the game of football, it happens. So that's why we bring Mike Mayock into the building as our GM. Build depth on your team so it becomes the next man up philosophy. The Raiders executed it phenomenally today and came out with the win in week one. One thing I was really proud of is Henry Ruggs III goes down and then comes back into the game. Didn't just sit out, didn't say I was hurt, I'm sitting out, I'm trying to get better. He came back in the game. And that's one thing that I was, I was um, very impressed with, just evaluating him in the draft process. He was a tough guy. Not very big in stature, but very fast, but tough. Everyone looked yeah. at his speed, but he was a tough kid. He plays hard-nosed football and does it the right way. Yeah, and we talked about it, not being able to have a preseason uh, and being able to perform with the depth that they had is yes. absolutely huge for the Silver and Black. Look, we still have plenty more to go in this show, plenty more to talk about with that big Raiders win. Uh, don't go anywhere because we're about to feature the most electric plays by number 28, 
We're breaking down Josh Jacobs when we come back. Don't go anywhere. Allegiant Air, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. America First Credit Union, the official credit union of the Las Vegas Raiders. By Coors Light, an official beer of Raider Nation. By Cox Business, proud partner of the Las Vegas Raiders. It, it was definitely different not playing with fans, uh, but as a team and as a unit, we kind of brought that juice to each other. Um, we fed off each other. And I mean, it's obviously big to get a win in the, for the first year that we're here with Las Vegas. And not only that, but just also for Oakland, too, just setting it off for them and just letting them know that we're still here and we still just want to win games and things like that. Um, so it's been huge. I had a pretty good game. Um, I, it's still a lot that I could, can correct. Uh, I know that there's a couple plays I look back and I'm like, man, I missed the whole, I missed the back, the back door cut. Um, things like that. That's that's more of the things that I try to hone myself on, just having a perfect game and uh, try to uh, come back better next week. Wow, he still thinks he has something to improve upon. Welcome back to the show. We've got Mike shut down corner. Eric Allen in the house with us. Battle of the backs, you guys, went to Josh Jacobs today. The man saw the end zone three times. Marcel, I want to ask you a question first mm -hmm. about this offense. What do you believe was working so well with the run game today? First of all, to your point, when you hit the end zone three times as a running back in week one, what? you feel good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you feel sure. good no matter For what sure. else happens. You hit that end zone, you hit that paint three times. <laughs> but to answer your question, everything was working. The offensive line played with great pad level, exploding off the ball, driving their man off the ball. And Josh Jacobs was running hard. Devontae yeah. Booker was running hard. And one thing as a back in the offensive, offensive room we always talk about in the run game, patience to an explosive through. And that's what they did. They continued to do that. Your, your line makes you efficient and your backs make you explosive. And they were both of those today. Patience sure. to explosive through. through. I like that. Yes. I like that a lot. <laughs> well, it seemed as though Carolina's defense was having a little trouble, EA. A little bit. Do you think maybe they missed uh, hey, a one Luke Keekley? They have been in that Panthers uniform forever. Yeah. So, again, yeah. the middle of the football field was a place to attack. We were really uh, unsure how they were going to attack that uh, Panthers defense, but they did attack it in the middle of the football field. Outstanding job. Tremendous ability to be able to get to the second level. Some of those big linemen, Gabe, and some of those guys. Mm -hmm. Great job by Josh, though, getting it done. Yeah, absolutely took advantage of the fact that they were starting four rookies on the defense and it certainly showed as let's take a look and break down a little bit of what we saw with Josh Jacobs today number 28 brought the heat <laughs> of course here are his stats 93 yards on the day three scores let's take a look at what the man was able to do what do you guys see here listen Josh Jacobs has the full spectrum for a running back he yeah. does everything right there you just saw him have an explosive pass out of the backfield Gets the guy and he, and he runs the option route. Go inside, go outside. Gets that linebacker on his heels and they can't stick him one on one. There is no chance in no man's land. And every run he gets, passing, catching, running the ball, he finishes going forward. Right here, you see him run that wide zone. Runs over the defender and keeps going. Always falling forward. After first contact, gets five more yards. Here, right in the end zone, offensive line does a great job, goes untouched in the end zone. There's nothing like it. Still has his flags on if you're playing flag football. <laughs> Look at him. Open, crossover, right inside. There's no feeling like that when you get in the end zone. That's his third touchdown, had two wow. others just like it. What, what yeah. makes a guy like Josh Jacobs so difficult to defend against? Yeah, he has so many uncoachable aspects in his game. I mean, the explosiveness, the center of gravity is very low. Just does an amazing job of exploding through holes. So you love the way this young man has been able to get to the point of contact mm. and be able to spin some things that you just don't see in film ever. So, again, when you look at a running back who has this kind of uh, explosiveness, it's just unbelievable the way he's able to use it. First game, no preseason game, still able to get right. down. And those uncultural things that EA is talking about, the spin moves, the, the, yes. the dip in the shoulder, they're, they're just instincts. Yes. Football instincts, the, the uncoachable characteristics that he has. That joystick yeah. kind of just stuff. phenomenal. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, right. How your thumbs, pushing A button, how your thumbs working, you know? You know? He's and, making all those moves. And he wants to catch 60 passes. I yes. mean, the guy really wants to be on the field three downs all the time and really do what he can, and we saw it in this game. And we're going to need to see it in the future because the Raiders do have a very tough schedule coming up. But coming up next, how about the Raiders' young secondary? They certainly brought the heat as well. They held it down. We talk Raiders' defense when we come back. Don't go anywhere.
They may have given up 30 points against the Panthers, but that young secondary, Jonathan Abram, Trevon, Trayvon Mullen, they showed up. They set the tone early as we talk about that new morphed together Raiders defense. Uh, EA, did you like what you saw from those young guys? Yeah, in particular safeties. Uh, you're talking about Jonathan had an outstanding football game, processed early and fast, runner pass, came down with violence but not out of control. And those are the things that you need to see from a safety. You know, he's placed with a great emotion. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when you play with too much emotion, you're out of control, you miss tackles. Yeah. I mean, he did a phenomenal job of all levels of playing safety from the middle of the field, taking away the big balls. Today, not any one, just one big play, you know, the 75-yard touchdown. But other yeah. than that, I mean, he played a tremendous, tremendous ball game. You know, like I know, EA, you can tell – that these young guys had that first game jitters, you know? <laughs> they had some rookies yeah. out there, yeah. some guys who were hurt last year, didn't really yep. finish the season. They had the first game jitters, but they worked it out. And when it came down to, when you're playing football down the stretch and it came down to it, they settled down. They took the leadership and play yeah. of Jonathan Abrams mm -hmm. yeah. playing inspired football all across the field, just, just like a man with his hair on fire. <laughs> Without a doubt. And then, again, when you have a young player who's playing with such emotion, sometimes some of the things that you miss is the communication. You heard him out there mm -hmm. because there were no fans. You heard him out yeah. there when they got into empty sets. He was talking about all verts, all verts. So he was communicating well, particularly when Nick uh, Kwiatkowski went out the ball game. It came down to the safety, making those calls. So, again, I mean, check mark, check mark, check mark on everything that a safety is supposed to be, he played big today. Yeah, I mean, and look, this is a guy that missed 15 games last year, and he said in his presser he was not going to leave Carolina without a W as you take a look. Nine tackles in the game, uh, zero interceptions, but absolutely playing a huge role yeah. in that defense, bringing the heat against Teddy Bridgewater. Should we see some of his B-roll? Absolutely. I say let's, let's take a look out. at what Jonathan Abram was able to do on the field as we roll the tape. What do you guys see here? Well, and, 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 oh, and again, we're talking about a player who plays with such emotion, such abandon, doesn't care about his body. But again, not a lot of missed tackles. You see mm -hmm. here, he comes up and he uses different tackling techniques. And mm -hmm. when you see that on film, you know that you're taken care of as a corner. You know if I miss a tackle, my guy's going to be there. You want your young safety flying around the field, and he was around the ball. And I hate to bring comparisons, but it reminds me of a young Earl Thomas, mm -hmm. a guy that's Ooh. always around the ball, feels extremely fast, plays with a ton of emotion, and can hit. He brings the hat. <laughs> Not huge in stature again, oh, yeah. right, but he right. is bringing it. He's bringing all the weight he has all, on every, every time he comes yeah. to the ball. And you'd love to see that. I, I was talking to Jonathan a ton, a ton during the offseason, and he was just excited to play football. And I wanted to see that excitement translate onto the football field. And today in week one, I saw that. We all saw that. <laughs> He got a little chippy, too, with C-Mac. I don't know if you yeah. saw the little relationship going on. I, I mean, sure. he was holding it down. There was sort of fierceness there in Carolina. It, it has to be with this young man. You need someone in that back end who's going to lay the wood yep. and lay the law. So, again, he steps up every single time. And, it's, again, when you're talking about a violent player, he's not out of control. And I think yeah. that's right. the one thing I'm seeing from mm. college days to now, that he's not out of control. He's in control. He I knows when to get that emotion out, yep. make that big hard hit, and then he knows how to secure a tackle when he needs to. One thing we saw is today we saw something, the missing piece that our defense was missing last year that all of Raider Nation missed and wanted to see and we have to mention he is wearing that 2-4 a mean, special yeah. number in this franchise we're talking about the late great Willie Brown Willie Brown for sure the unbelievable phenomenal versatile Charles, Charles Woodson. Woodson you know leaves at corner comes back at safety and it's probably going to be a Hall of Famer so again this number means a lot not just to the Raider Nation but around the league they know the person who's wearing 24 and is playing DB for the Raiders it, means a lot. Bob Romanski the equipment manager here <laughs> who was in charge of numbers a lot of yes, times yes. he's just not handed out the 2-4 <laughs> to just anybody. To just anybody. Yeah. You got to ask for it and it comes with big responsibility. And yeah. he lived up to it today in week one. And I'm looking forward to seeing him live up to it throughout the season and, and look, his career. He's got a date with Drew Brees next week. So absolutely, we are going to need to rely on a one Jonathan Abram, Abram moving forward in the season. Speaking of relying, how about Henry Ruggs, the 12th overall pick out of Alabama? How did he do in his NFL debut? We talk Henry Ruggs and what he was able to do for this offense. Coming up next, don't go anywhere. By Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of the Las Vegas Raiders.
it gets all the anxiety out. So now it's just back to, like I always say, just playing football. You know, all the nerves and everything, they're, they're pretty much gone now because now I can say I did it. It was big for the, to, you know, for my first, you know, my first catch to be, you know, a big play and to, to get, pretty much get the game started for the offense. I was, you know, that's big for me because I feel like, you know, I want to be one of the guys that can be the spark, you know, whenever we need it, and, and that's exactly what it was. It's big for not only the fans, but but for the organization, you know, the momentum of the organization, because, you know, starting off, you know, in a new in a new city, new, you know, new location, under, just, you know, everything's new, so it's just kind of just kind of the start of something big, and you know, gives us momentum moving forward. Momentum, Henry Ruggs III showing us what he is capable. Look, his stats may not have jumped off the page, but that doesn't mean the guy didn't have an impact on the field. Marcel, I was tired just watching him <laughs> run all over in that offense. What did you see from the young rookie today? Henry Ruggs hit the field running, literally. Literally. That's right. <laughs> running all yeah. over the did. place. He did a phenomenal job just making the defense – dictate what they were doing before the snap of the ball. And that's something that we'll showcase here in a second. He was running all over the place. Everything was full speed. He is in phenomenal condition, yeah, you, have you, ha you have to be. You have to be. I mean, just right? such a versatile player. And for a young player to be in all those situations, to be motioning, to be in the backfield, mm -hmm. just tremendous for him and how fast he's being able to capture that playbook, which is so important, right? A young guy, you're usually thinking, you know what? You just line up, run deep. No, it wasn't about him. He was running across the field. He was running down. Diagonal, so just yeah. a great job from him from a physical standpoint and a mental standpoint. Yeah, and he showcased, you talk about how deep and thick the John Gruden playbook is. The yeah. guy is smart. He was able to yes. grasp that playbook. As we take a look at his stats behind us, uh, certainly not a lot of catches, but he made his presence known. 55 yards, three catches. Let's take a look and break down what you saw from him today, Marcel, on the football field against that Carolina defense. Here we are, first play of the game. Henry Ruggs III running a fly sweep. He doesn't get the ball here, but he has the defense running with him. Yeah. Now, he shifts from one side of formation to the other side of formation, then runs back across with full speed. And something that that shift does is it makes the defense tell you whether they're man or zone. If his guy follows him, they're in man. If he doesn't, they bump over their zone, and he knows how he has to run that route. Here, listen, five weeks down the line, this is going to be a touchdown. Yeah. Derek Carr is going to have yep. a feel for his speed, going to put it on the line. Now they're in a triple option, lines up right behind Derek Carr, gets a little pitch out, DC makes the right decision fast, gets the ball into his playmaker's hands, lets him do his thing. That's an efficient run play there. Now he has the ghost motion. The ghost motion is when he motions behind Derek Carr, doesn't get the ball, but they have to respect the reverse from the fastest man in the NFL. And here he is on the fly sweep again. Doesn't get the ball, but Booker, who had a great game today too, relieving um, JJ when he needed a rest, gets a big run. Henry Rose III, his speed, his versatility yes. allows the Raiders to do everything more efficiently. Mm. I I'm so impressed that this is the first game with no preseason and he's able to line up in all those different spots. And again, as you know, it's just not that one play. If DC decides to change the play, they have to be comfortable to be able to understand that Ruggs, hey, I can make that adjustment on the fly. So, I mean, just an outstanding job for game one. And again, he gets hurt, goes out, that maybe took taken away a little bit of some of the opportunities he may have of catching the football. But as a DB, when you see number 11, you know how fast he is. So you're always anticipating mm -hmm. him to go deep. So that's why all that motion really gets the offense in a really uh, positive position. And I'll tell you, EA, I was able to welcome him to the Raider Nation. Oh, cool. Once he got drafted, had a good call with him, a great interview, and he is a phenomenal kid. Mm -hmm. Not just fast, not just a great athlete, but loves football, wants to be great. Yeah. And that's something you look for when you're bringing a guy into your locker room. One thing Mike Mayock and John Gruden have done a great job is getting great character guys. Mm -hmm. And he is one of those guys that is able to make a difference on the field and show his teammates how to work hard. Right how to consume a John Gruden playbook and come out in week one with no preseason, no, preseason. no scrimmages, yeah. but to yeah. be able to digest the entire playbook and not have any mistakes, not visible mistakes. At right. Least. Yeah. Great character, intelligent. We know he's got a 4 2 7 40. <laughs> yep. And then the toughness. Talk about the fact that I don't know about you guys at home, but I <laughs> breathed a sigh of relief because he left the game with what looked like a knee injury. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you all were feeling about that, but I was – 
a little nervous. Yeah, for, for sure. And, and again, I, I think when you start to look at this roster, there are more guys like that now yeah. than there almost ever was. It, you used to have to go and get a veteran to be able to display some of those characteristics and that mm -hmm. type of personality. You'd have to go and find a guy like Eric Allen, you know, and in his 10th year to come over. But right now, they're doing an outstanding job of drafting top, high-quality people. Did and EA just name drop himself? I, I, think, I, I, I think he did. I did. Uh, I did. You know, I did. guys like EA. <laughs> but it's true because you're right. They're drafting well. They're getting guys well in the free agency. I mean, Nelson Aguilar stepped up when he needed to. Yeah. So certainly it's nice to see that when a guy like, you know, even Brian Edwards left the game. So it's certainly nice to see that that offense has some playmakers that can step up in the event, uh, you know, someone goes down like Henry Ruggs. And speaking of playmakers, when you're talking about Henry Ruggs and his speed, something that the vertical game can do, not only just the motions, but actually running down the field and causing a threat. We had a three and out the first drive, but you saw DC wasn't yeah. afraid to let it go to Henry Rugg the third. It went out of bounds. But guess what? The, t the defense knows they have to respect it. Right. They have to respect the speed. Not only the speed, they have to respect the quarterback is going to be able to take that chance and let the ball go. Yeah. Because you let the ball go with Henry Ruggs the third, and he's going to go up and get it and compete <laughs> for the ball. Yeah. But that yeah. helps your star running back as well right, because they can't load the box. They have to double yeah. up. You can't just put yeah. 10 in the box and say that is my so corners important. have one-on-one -on, -one on Henry Ruggs III. He's just not going to do yeah, it. Yeah, that, that's so important as, as for the balance of the offense. When you start to see those eight- and nine-man boxes, now it's time to check off and go deep. So, again, that adds another weapon to your arsenal when you're at the line of scrimmage, when you're able to check and check to a big play down the field. And you know what? Defenses have looked at the film and understand that it is exceptional speed that's going to really beat you over the top. What does a guy like Henry Ruggs do where he is able to be that vertical threat do for a guy like Darren Waller? Oh, it opens them up. You're not going to double him. the middle of the field because your safety's cheating over to uh, a Henry Ruggs' side. He has to cheat over because the corner is like, listen, I got. I'm not going to help you. Uh, you know, <laughs> right, I'm yeah. a pinto, and this Ferrari's lining up on me. I got to get some 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 help over here. Yeah. So a guy like that just it's just you cannot replace mm -hmm. speed like that. Mm -hmm. You can't right. teach it. You can't replace. It. That's one reason why the late great Al Davis loved it. That's right. That's because right. it's something that you just cannot teach. And right now, that combination of the running game with the tight end, with a big guy over top to be able to beat you deep, those kind of things really help you when you're in third and ones, when you're in second and ones, and you can take a shot or come back down to your tight end or run the football. That really, you're dictating to the defense how many guys can be in the box, mm -hmm. how many guys can cover your tight end, who's going to be on top. So again, this offense is really working its way through. And again, we have to think no preseason games now, and this offense mm -hmm. is still able to generate 30-plus points today. First time firing, in a long time. Firing. Firing on all cylinders. I cannot <laughs> wait for more Raider football, guys. Games, of course, are won or lost in the trenches. And let's just say the Raiders won the battle up front on both sides of the ball. We got more Raiders game day after the break. Don't go anywhere. by San Manuel Casino, official Southern California casino of Allegiant Stadium. A huge congrats to the Liberty Patriots who are the Intermountain Healthcare Team of the Week. They are the 2019 Nevada for a state champs and are ranked number 22 in the high school football American preseason poll. During the year, the team volunteers with Nevada Reading Week and a Susan B. Komen walk run with several players also helping serve meals to the homeless. All right, welcome back. Welcome back into Raiders game day. Aaron Coscarelli alongside my four-time pro bowler, former Raider fullback Marcel Reese. Marcel, I just want to let you know, this was the number of times Derek Carr was sacked today. I'm talking a zero with two guys going down on that offensive line. We talk unsung hero of the game. Who is it for you, Marcel? You know what? <laughs> Denzel Good did a phenomenal job stepping in at the right tackle, not only after Trent Brown went down, but after Sam Young went down. But I'm giving it to the entire offensive okay. line and Tom Cable, the best offensive line coach in the NFL. He does a great job of getting guys ready to go at different positions. Yeah. Denzel Good woke up this morning thinking he was going to cheer his teammates on, be a high-energy guy on the sideline, pay attention to the game, be locked in, but not expecting to take majority of yeah. the reps at right tackle. But he did. He stepped up, 
He did a great job, phenomenal job, and zero sacks. A lot of people have to do with the zero sacks, not just Tom Cable on the offensive line. You're talking about your great young fullback and Alec Ingo. Got to get a fullback some love. <laughs> You're tied in. Jason Witten and company stepping up. And Derek Carr getting the ball out on time. Receivers getting open. There's a ton of different variables that go in to your t offensive team going with zero sacks. But it's a great job. They took care of the ball, mm -hmm. took care of your quarterback, and you played uh, efficient offensive football. Right? I mean, what does it say about the depth for Tom Cable? Because usually, I mean, you play obviously uh, with hosts of O-lines. When your right tackle goes down, is that kind of like that's you're tapped out sort of? Well, I mean, in, in some cases, depending on the year, yes, you could be <laughs> tapped out. But in this case, again, it goes back to Mike Mayock and John Gruden doing a phenomenal job in building this team with depth and versatility. Your guys aren't just one-dimensional. They could play multiple positions on the offensive line. At the receiver position, when guys go down, they just step up. And Tom yeah. Cable got these guys ready for week one. And this is – I can't say it enough. It is hard to get guys ready with no preseason – a scaled-down training camp, but these guys were ready. And offense, offensive line play, it usually takes mid-season or, or after the first quarter of the season to get physically ready, get your pad level down, get your timing right, get your combinations right. It says a lot about this coaching staff that this offense played this way, especially this offensive line played this way in week one against a really good defense. Yeah, and I think you, you really hit the nail on the head there. No preseason game, not being able to have all of your you know key players there uh, with losing Trent Brown, then Sam Young goes down, then you need to shuffle Denzel Good over there. Yeah. I mean, like you said, it really does go to show that this team came ready to play on the East Coast, East Coast time zone, uh, and they showed up when they needed to. Certainly, Absolutely. unsung hero goes to the entire offensive line. For Marcel Reese. All right, plenty of show coming up. We are going to talk about what the rest of the NFL did more around the league scores for you in a moment. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back into Raiders game day. Aaron Coscarelli, Marcel Reese with you as we take a look at the NFL scores around the league brought to you by Sports Water. Marcel, Interesting week one, no less, and we knew we were going to learn a lot about these teams without a preseason. There were a ton of good games around. Uh, you know, you have terrific Tom over in, t in Tampa Bay. D not as terrific, <laughs> but yes. Okay, there we go. This was the scoreboard I was looking for. Um, but certainly an interesting roundup nonetheless as we take a look at the scores behind us. 38-25, uh, uh, courtesy of Seattle. You mm -hmm. were talking about... Danger Russ, right? I mean, Danger you Russ, always... you just can't bet against Danger Russ. Check out Chicago putting up 27 points on the board. I mean, everyone's looking for Cleveland, and, and they're saying, oh, why are they surprised? I mean, they have all the hype. They're good on paper, but right. they really haven't produced and, and lived up to the hype that everyone thought they would as of yet. So we can't be surprised about that. They have to prove it and show it to us first. Check out Bill Belichick in New England. What? Staying on their role, winning in okay. the division. But it is the Dolphins. <laughs> it is the Dolphins. Let's sure. keep in mind. Yeah. And you got A-Rod putting up 43 points, being himself, like we already mentioned, the Washington football team. Football team. Football team. Putting up 27 points on the Eagles. Yeah. Only 17 points. Then we have Jacksonville and the Colts. Phillip Rivers over there in the Colts in New Digs. And, um, you know, San Francisco going down to Arizona, Kyler yeah. Murray and company coming out with a big win there. As, and then we yeah. have the Chargers. Um, they're the Chargers. <laughs> Oh, I think you're just saying that. No, absolutely, though. Certainly interesting to see, you know, what week one was going to transpire because none of these teams got a preseason and certainly new faces in new places. You know we got to talk about the storylines that are there as hopefully that'll be behind me. Okay, great. I think it is. Or is it right here? Perfect. Cam Newton. 75 rushing yards, two rushing touchdowns on the day. What did you think of his performance today? I thought Cam was getting back to himself. Cam looked healthy. He looked energized. He looked charismatic. He looked like him old, his old self. And that's what I was proud to see. I wanted to see, you know, you want Cam to do well because he's a good guy. He plays with great energy, great passion. He loves the game of football. And he showed that today with the New England Patriots. But one thing that stood out to me was Adrian 
all day Peterson, 35 years old, on a different team with the Detroit Lions and playing inspired football. Still strong, still fast, still finishes runs, and still plays great football. Still a great back in this league. Well, we talked about his quarterback performance in the Patriots. How about Tom Brady, the former Patriots quarterback? Three, 239 passing yards, two touchdowns, and two picks on the day. Three sacks against New Orleans Saints. What's your take? Because, of course, we're playing the Saints mm -hmm. next week. What was your take on what Tom Brady was able to do as the new you know, quarterback for the Buccaneers? Well, listen, Tom is the GOAT. But we have to make sure that we, uh, we understand that he's human. And he's going to have growing pains. He needs preseason just like everyone else. That team needs time to gel. They're going to take time. I think Tom is going to be just fine. And he played some great football. He had some really phenomenal throws in this game. And you can tell that they just weren't on the same page. They had some really wonky penalties early on, especially – offensively, something that you don't see Tom Brady offenses do. And it's not just up to him. He's the quarterback, and a lot falls on him because he is the GOAT. Yep. But yeah. that Tampa Bay team is going to have to get it together as a whole. Mike Evans had that hamstring injury, wasn't sure whether or not he was going to play or not, and they seemed sort of, like you said, out of sorts. So certainly interesting uh, to see if the Buccaneers can get back on the same page yeah. moving forward. Meanwhile, it is time for another segment called what was he thinking? And we got to talk about this one because it's sort of a head scratcher. You have a different take on this, but Detroit linebacker Jamie Collins ejected after sort of headbutting the ref. Uh, mm -hmm. I need to get your take on, on that because, you know, new team gets ejected his first game, kind of a bonehead thing, but you sort of aren't he really. He shouldn't have been ejected. He was arguing a call, obviously. Here's the play. Didn't try to necessarily head. He didn't headbutt him, first of all. Didn't make contact with the head. It hit him in the stomach. The ref flopped and, fl <laughs> and flinched before he even got close to him. And this is football. This is just a case where you see. The rest need some preseason, too. That's a you know, good point. We got to show them a little grace. They need some preseason. But Jamie Collins, a good linebacker, veteran guy. He was not definitely not trying to hit the referee. If he was, I'll, I'll die on that sword, tell him I was wrong. But I don't think he was trying to hit the ref, wasn't trying to be malicious in any way. And you see the Chicago Bears love it. Let's throw him the flag, get him out of here. Goodbye. See you later, Jamie <laughs> Collins. You are ejected. All right, well, listen, plenty more show to come after the break. We're going to hear from John Gruden. How does he feel his team did in their first win as a Las Vegas Raider? Plenty more coming back. Don't go anywhere. You know John Gruden is going to sleep well tonight. <laughs> Welcome back to Raiders game day. Aaron Koss, Corelli, Marcel, Reese, Eric Allen in the house as the Raiders pull off their first win on the road this season, 34-30 in Carolina. Um, and, you know, Coach Gruden actually talked about it and made a good point ahead. I think a lot of people were kind of curious what kind of offense they were going to see from Carolina, and he talks about it. There really wasn't much tape. How do you think that they handled that? I mean, that's kind of difficult with a guy like Matt Rule coming out of the college yeah. system. What did you guys think in terms of what the, the Raiders needed to do there? Well, again, I think we heard that earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked uh, when we heard Jonathan talk about how difficult it was getting prepared for an offense that you have a new coordinator, new quarterback, you have a special running back. So what do you watch? You watch yeah. film from last year on Christian McCaffrey, then you go back to Temple, and then you go to Baylor. So it's so difficult trying to do that. So what you have to do is you have to focus on yourself, mm -hmm. find out what you do best, focus on the positive things that you do, try and limit the negative things yeah. and so that's how you kind of get started and then what I was so impressed with was after you go in the halftime you come out after those adjustments they went three and out three and out didn't let the Panthers score in the third quarter so that's a huge huge advantage for a football team that goes into the halftime makes those adjustments on both offense and defense but defensively you come out you get a three and out get the ball back to your offense we need to see more of that and that's special EA because a good coach can script the first half for anything because you don't know what the other team is doing. Yeah. But when you go into halftime, you make your adjustments, especially for a young team with no preseason, no in-game experience, and they come out and they execute the way they did early on in the third quarter and then at the end of the fourth quarter. Yeah. That's special and a great sign for this team. But when you have no preseason, again, I can't yeah. say it enough, a tailored down uh, a training camp, and then a, a, a young team, the most important thing, like EA said, is to worry about yourself. Jonathan said it early on in his presser, but to worry about yourself, play sound 
fundamental football, play physical football with high energy, even without the crowd, and that's how you come out with the win at the end. This is the first time, by the way, the Raiders scored this many points in 28 games. That is a <laughs> lot of games to finally put up 34 points, and I want to talk to you guys about the relationship between John Gruden and Derek Carr, and I think certainly the advantage in this game is that they've been together for three years. Yeah. Talk about the relationship between quarterback and coach. Knowing both of these guys personally, you know that they both love the game mm -hmm. so much. They both feel very passionate about the game and take it seriously, offensive football. John's very passionate about the quarterback position and the offense, and Derek is the same. You can tell they not only respect each other a ton, but they like each other, and that's so important in this relationship. And in the third year, getting more familiar with each other, D.C. knows what, what John wants to mm -hmm. get to at the line of scrimmage. So John doesn't have to talk so much. He doesn't have to micromanage D.C. They are thinking and on the same wavelength when you can see D.C. making adjustments at the line and getting guys in the yeah. right positions. And he's talking a ton. With no fans, you can hear everything. Yeah. <laughs> and you love hearing those audibles. You're, you're hearing Cindy Gruden yeah, out there yeah. and, and Tiger Woods. And it's awesome to see guys that – because that is – Fun, fun football to be played. Yeah, and that's what you want to see, especially in this first game, because we know that the, the, the Raiders' uh, schedule in the future is going to be difficult. But how challenging is it to win on the road? I mean, in Carolina, Ia, you've had to do it before. Yeah, it's difficult going back east, and you have all those variables that happen. You know, time change. Are you going to sleep in here? What hotels are you going to sleep in? The one thing I thought three years ago when John uh, signed on was I thought it was going to be a difficult and how you relate to today's play and going back to Derek Carr. And I had a conversation with John. I said, hey, you know what? The game has really hasn't changed. The only thing that's really changed is how uh, players today accept criticism. Mm. And so I thought that was going to be a hurdle for him. Luckily, he has Derek Carr. Yeah. And Derek this year, I thought, uh, is one of the big reasons why this team was able to go on the road in a difficult situation and win because he's kind of taken on John's personality on the football field. And I think that's what Rich Gannon did when his – you know, MVP yeah, type years yeah. were going on when his team was so successful. So, again, credit to both uh, uh, D.C. and John kind of getting it done, taking that great uh, energy on the field without those fans and coming up with a big win. Overcoming adversity is what yes. Raiders is all about and certainly good to be 1-0. We take a look at the next four games on that Raiders schedule. They are not easy. Don't go anywhere. Raiders game day will be right back. Welcome back into Raiders game day as we are celebrating week one officially in the books for the silver and black taking care of business on the road 34 30 against those Carolina Panthers and good thing because they have got a very tough four games ahead of them. Take a look of course our final score of the game tonight uh, Derek Carr 239 yards one touchdown zero sacks zero turnovers you gotta like that. If you're John Gruden and certainly Josh Jacobs came to play three touchdowns. By the way, I have him on two uh -oh. of my <laughs> fantasy oh, teams. I'm sorry, but I am very happy with my W today. Uh, and Teddy Bridgewater, we weren't sure what we were going to see. Right. We knew he was 5-0 and in New Orleans. Yep last season, but he certainly showed that there is some potential there, there with that Matt Rule, Joe Brady mm -hmm. offense, Christian McCaffrey, although not as involved in the first half of the game, right. certainly got things rolling in the second half, but we were able to slow him down. Yeah, for sure. I think they have quality offensively. I mean, Robbie Anderson's a terrific player. DJ Moore's yeah. a, a quality receiver. Seth, and again, I think later on, we're going to see this offense maybe in the top 15 in the league, mm. and we're going to be very excited about this win. I will say, I was I was a little, it was a little iffy, that last play call, to not give it to Christian McCaffrey. I'm not complaining, not at all, because we did what we had to do. Yeah. We got Sometimes to stop. you're trying to be cute. You know, you're trying yeah. to be cute. We'll fake it here and fake it there. It's a little questionable, questionable exactly. play call. Uh, you know, your last yeah. play of the game, you're not giving it. I know that play worked for him earlier on in the game, but I was, I was, um, I was a little surprised by that. Yeah. I'll say that much. Yeah. We're not sure why. I think a lot of people were wondering why C-Mac wasn't as involved in the first half. But right. like uh, you said, 
We're not complaining over here <laughs> on the set here at our clock studios. Take a look at the four games, okay, that the Raiders have next. And it's not going to get any easier because we saw what Drew Brees and company did to Tom yeah. Brady and those Buccaneers. They have a date Monday night football with the Saints. EA, I know that's your old team. Yeah. Should yeah. we be a little nervous? You, you have to be. Sure. Quarterback-wise, just tremendous. We all know what he's about, the timing, the tempo of his football team. The running back is very versatile. He has Mike Thomas one of the best receivers in the mm -hmm. league, just a yeah. possession guy. Tayshawn is a kind of guy who's going to move all over the place. They'll put him in, have him run some RPO. So, again, if I'm a defensive player studying this week, I'm going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday trying to break down this film, trying to find a plan and a program to be able to be able to get into the game and recognize some stuff. But again, Saints do a fantastic job of giving you so many challenges mm -hmm. offensively. It's going to be tough for a young secondary. He ain't doing all that talk about the Saints, but I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> it's the first game in Las Vegas at Allegiant Stadium. Woo! The Las Vegas Raiders are going to show up, <laughs> shut Breeze down and everything else. <laughs> Unfortunately, like we don't that. have no any fans in the stands. And, and, you know, owner Mark Davis is bummed about that. Everyone's bummed about not being able to see the Las Vegas Raiders perform in yeah. Allegiant Stadium. I don't care who that other team is. It's the first <laughs> inaugural game in Las Vegas, and the Raiders taking it to them. I thought what was really interesting, though, too, uh, looking real quick at the schedule, is that these are all different quarterbacks that they have against. Yeah, yeah. It's a challenge. Yeah. So certainly will be interesting to see what that Raiders – can do and bring that defense-wise uh, for their next four games. Um, but you know what? We've got a double header for Monday Night Football. Ooh. I want to get your game picks because I'm curious where you go with this. <laughs> uh, Monday Night Steelers have a date with the Giants on the road. Uh, where's your pick there? Where are you I'm going? I'm going to let EA go because I don't want them copying my picks. What, what are you I'm talking gonna let about? EA go you, first. Hey, listen. I'm going defense all the way. Here. All right. <laughs> you know what? Ladies first. How about that? Okay. okay. okay? I'm going to go with the Giants because what? two words. Say Saquon Barkley, feed the man the rock. This okay? is not fantasy football right now. <laughs> no, we're talking about real football. <laughs> so All right, who's next? You go, uh, you go, you go. I'm going Pittsburgh. <laughs> Come on. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, Big Ben yeah. and company, okay. they, they right. got that pass rush. Come yes. on, I'm going Pittsburgh. You got Watt, you got Fitzpatrick back there, you got Joe Hayden at corner. You got to go with the Steelers. The Steelers are going to blow them out. They don't have Saquon. <laughs> I don't, I'm not worried about it. All right, well, I, I just want to know what happens when I win in this matchup. But the second game of the night, Titans have a date on the road. They're taking on the Broncos. I'll go first. Look, we saw what the Titans were able to do defensively last year. Yep. Drew Locke, no Von Miller. Cortland Sutton is banged up. He's still questionable. So I'm going to go with the Titans. It's kind of a no-brainer for me. Titans. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Titans. Not even close. Not even close. No, no. Titans. Titans. Titans Jayon Brown, one of the best linebackers uh, in the National Football League, doesn't get a lot of press, but does an outstanding job in coverage, rushing, and does it all. But Wesley Today, Woodard. Conley. You got Wesley Woodard in the middle. Yes. Yeah. They're stacked. Yeah. And their head coach is, you know, yeah. a defensive Mike guy. Mike Grable's so. a great head coach. He's done he's a great done job. done a phenomenal so job yes. over there in Tennessee. All and right, that guys. That guy was running the ball. I just, man. Okay. I'm, I'm scared over here. So we're good across the board. All yep. right. I like that pick. Uh, are you guys, did you guys have fun? First episode in the books, our Raiders game day show. First one in our brand new Cox Studios. You guys had a little fun? Cox Studios, awesome. beautiful. It's nice, right? The, most, awesome. I mean, the best part is we're talking about a Raider win on a Sunday dub. night, so that's all we need to worry about. Absolutely, Raiders win 1-0 and oh, uh, to start off the 2020 season for Raiders game day. I'm Aaron Coscarelli, Marcel Reese, Eric Allen. We will see you guys next week. Allegiant Air, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Modelo, setting the cold standard for authentic Mexican beer since 1925. By Credit One Bank, the official credit card of the Las Vegas Raiders. By Twitch, the official live streaming platform of the Las Vegas Raiders.